Hey guys, today I want to make kind of an argument for you why cheating is accepted at pro level play. And my argument comes from many years of seeing cheating happen and not being punished. And in the guidelines, the guidelines actually have the ability to be abused. And it has been this way for a long time. Alex Pacini, a lot of people look up to him. He was banned twice, and now he's back from his second ban, which is both astounding and I can't imagine a scenario where someone in, somebody's been banned f for cheating twice and then is allowed to return. Here's why cheating is accepted uh, among the pro level play. Uh, I know a lot of you find that offensive for me to say, but it's all about getting an edge and if the edge is actually legal, so let's just, let's assume again, for argument's sake, that you get two warnings, and these warnings could be fetching with your misty tutor, right? In that video that I showed you, where the guy is using a misty rainforest as a misty rainforest plus vampiric tutor, and even when he gets caught, Federico Lemes does not give up. He has a second cheat where he puts back the wrong card. So he's able to tutor, and he does not get punished. If that was the case, and you could do this two times, wouldn't you be foolish not to maximize your potential to win? You might be like, isn't this just Alex? I mean, Alex is the only one, right? No, he's not the only one. Uh, Brian Kibler has done it in the past. They have taken this gray area and the gray area is really for new players. It's when new players make a mistake and you know it's their first mistake of the tournament. Maybe they got a little nervous. It's not meant for pros. The pro should be held to a higher standard than a new player. But they are not. They're held to the same standard. So they use these rules and regulations. It's the same reason EFRO can get a whole bunch of people banned at FNM because He's using the system that was created to help pros at the expense of new players. And that's why a new player would never win a GP. You know, you have that story about the guy in Houston and he was offered a bribe. He didn't take it and he got like, how is that any different from conceding? The only difference is, is he's a new player. A magic pro can ask a non-magic or ask another person to concede, and that's perfectly fine. But when someone turns down a, a bribe to concede, that's not okay. That should be reported. So when you think about conceding versus taking a bribe, I mean, the, the way conceding works is, hey, I'm going to concede to you, Eric Froelich, and then we'll get... We'll both get to the top eight, and then Eric, you're gonna help me later. So the bribe here, which could later actually be money, is, I mean, it's still happening, right? There's still something being exchanged for conceding. Okay, let me get to this particular point. I have been following Alex for a long time. Um, he is from New York. I believe he was in New York around the same time I was at NYU. And he has a reputation up there. And he has a reputation for being the nicest guy. And a lot of these people who cheat are just some of the nicest people you can imagine because I'm going to tell his story a little later in more detail. And then you can understand why he has to cheat. It's not optional. He has to maximize his odds. Getting a gameplay warning, you normally get two of those, and most new players would not take advantage of them. When I mean take advantage, I mean if you can miss the Rainforest Tutor and you get caught two times, that's fine because you probably did it the whole time. If you're willing to do it on camera and you know that you're on camera, I mean, it's pretty obvious there's a giant camera out there that tells me that you have done it all along. You know, it's 
beyond me. Um, it's something that I can't understand where a cheater gets caught and they're like, well, I only cheated this one time on camera that I knew I would. I mean, come on. You guys don't believe that, right? So at the very end of the day, we see a, a lot of interesting stories. Um, Brian Kibler, for instance. Uh, Brian Kibler is someone who is famous, someone who is well-respected in the community, but he is also someone who uses the rules for his own advantage. Uh, what do I mean by this? There is a incident where, uh, flashback to 2009 PT Austin, he wins the tournament, and one of his deciding plays on camera for the quarterfinals match was him not telling his opponent to destroy his noble hierarch, which would have offset his temple and therefore won the game for him. How crazy is this? That one of the most famed magic players, if not the most famous magic player at the time, he used the rules for his benefit. Now, he did have an excuse that it was a May clause. He felt that that's... But he's a pro magic player, and that is a very commonly played card in that deck at the time, Desolation Angel. Was it Desolation Angel, or I think I'm thinking of a different angel. It is fascinating that, um, you know, it's very strange when this happens, when you have other people who... It's like the it's pretty much like the stock exchange in the government and really how life works. If you get um if you know that you get two game warnings every tournament, then you would be foolish not to cheat. Because you get two game warnings. So here's the play. Oh, it's Angel of Despair. He puts it into play, which has a mandatory destroy target permanent effect. Knowing this, Brian Kibler purposefully doesn't put Bane Slayer Angel in his hand into play. However, he the opponent misses the Angel's trigger entirely. This allows Kibler to play Bane Slayer Angel with the help of his not so dead noble hierarchs and outrace for the win. Brian Kibler he does not win this PT unless he misses his trigger. And it is up to him to keep a good game state. Kibler should have received a game loss if it could be proven that he purposely ignored the trigger that would have cost him the match in his PT victory. However, Kibler would later to go on and claim that he thought it was a May ability, Brian Kibler's plausible deniability. There's a real chance that Kibler knew about the trigger was mandatory, but Kibler would lose the match if the trigger happened, and he knows that the worst case scenario is a warning if he doesn't remind his opponent of the trigger. The correct play here, cheat. There you go. It is incredibly obvious, incredibly not... Uh, it's. This is Magic Pro level. If you're making a living on this and you need to maximize your money, which I'll get into Alex Pacini a little later and his kind of story, and why it doesn't surprise me that he's still probably cheating today. Because uh, when you need to win money that badly and you don't really have a choice, um, you got to do it. You have to cheat to feed yourself. You have to cheat to make money. You have to cheat for your very expensive Las Vegas dinners with Rudy. Fascinating, um, and this has been from the very beginning of time. Uh, uh, Mike Long used to use intimidation factors. He used to call you and curse at you randomly and scream. I, I mean, this is what I mean. You think I'm making this stuff up, but this is known stuff. I, even in middle school and elementary school, I knew like this was how magic players behaved at the pro level is they would scream at you to make you try to misplay. They would yell at you and curse at you. And you're just like a little kid. And you're just like, what, what am I doing? Like, what are you doing? And it's because 
the, it's flawed. The system is very flawed in the fact that it does help cheaters. And it's meant for cheaters to win. A non-cheater cannot win because they're not going to think, oh, let me take, they're not going to look at Brian Kibler and they're going to be like, all right, so Angel of Despair, okay, I've seen that card play a million times. All right, what card do you want to destroy? Okay, you destroy this card. All right, thanks. But Kibler knows. At the pro level, he knows he needs that Noble Hierarch to outrace. He knows that Noble Hierarch not being destroyed made the difference. In this case, it's clear as day. There's no question. But, hey, everyone makes mistakes, right? Bye, guys. Oh, I, I should say mistakes are more commonly made by Magic Pros than amateurs. I think that would be true because amateurs want to intentionally make the mistake. That's why we have the rule. Only at the pro level would you have to maximize your expected value and that's by you know it, it makes perfect sense for brian kibley to do, do that to do that he wins the jeep uh, pro tour it makes a lot of money it makes perfect sense for alex Pacini to keep uh using it makes perfect sense for federico lemes to keep using his uh rainforest misty tutor because what's he going to get a game warning great and and this particular a leak. He didn't even get any warning. It was just like, oh, okay, just don't do that again. On camera. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.